two, one. All right. Um, hi guys, my name is Trevor. Um, I work for Master Electric. I'm here on behalf of Mankato Computer Technology to teach you guys some cool ways that we can have fun with computers. Um, with me is my trusted sidekick, Colin. Um, I'm actually more like his sidekick, but um, Colin works for Mankato Computer Technology and can answer all the high level questions that I have a hard time uh, remembering. But uh, before we get started, Colin, if you want to take over the screen and show everybody how they can log in and either follow along or download these slides later, that would be great. Sure thing. All right. So um, everything that we do on our uh, handy dandy um, computer classes, um, we also post on uh, the Mankato Computer Technology website, which is at mankatotext.com. You can type that into your uh, address bar. You can search Google for Mankato Computer Technology, and we should be the first result, ideally, if I'm doing my job. Um, and then uh, from here, from the home page, if you go to the About section, you'll get this pop-down menu. Uh, at the very bottom, there's one a button that says Presentations. And if we click on that, it's going to take us uh, to all of the presentations that we've done uh, going all the way back to 2018. Um, and today's is right here at the top. Um, and uh, so if you click on that, it's going to open up in your browser as a PDF. So you can scroll through all the slides. Um, you can download it from here by clicking this button. You can print it, although today's uh, presentation is 82 slides. So I would, I would recommend against that. Um, but uh, if you're just dying to, um, the, there's the print button. Um, <laughs> So once again, uh, we're going to mankatotext.com. We're going to about presentations, selecting the pertinent presentation. The one on the top is ours for tonight. And then you should be able to, uh, to go from there. So Colin, my question to you, um, when I did this as a PowerPoint, some of the slides and the titles still had links when they download as a PDF. Will it also, will, it, will those hyperlinks still work? Or I tested, I tested five or six of them and they seem to still be still working. Good. Yeah. Okay, perfect. That, that's definitely a front side bias though. I didn't go super deep and that's okay. That's check okay. all of them, but. So, um, rather than printing them out actually the slides that we made here are interactive so um a lot of the slides have links or hyperlinks on them so if you open it electronically um you can actually dive further into a lot of the information that's on here so like colin said it's it is 82 slides uh it takes up a lot of space but um i wanted to space it out try to give us some talking points and conversation pieces and um, as I was telling Mike before the meeting got started, actually several of these slides are one hour classes that Colin and I have taught in the past. So some of them are topics that deserve a whole hour and a half. So we'll try to hit everything at a real surface level today. And then um, if you see anything that you'd really like to learn about, you can email Mike or Mike is probably gonna watch a lot of this presentation too. And if you see something um, that would be of interest, then you guys can feel free to reach out to him and we can set up an hour long class or revisit some of the classes that we've taught before. So today we're going to start with uh, as many ideas as I could figure out and Google search on how to have fun with your computer. So this is a, a quick list or I guess the categories that I tried to dive into and break this up into. So we'll hit each one of these and each one of these has a little bit of a subsection on how to do it on your computer. So uh, things that you can do on your computer that I, these are things that I really like to do is watching videos and listening to music. It's probably how I spend most of my time with technology. Playing games is right up there is number three for me. Uh, finding random fun stuff is uh, pretty much how I kill time on the internet most days. Uh, learning something new is when I'm, uh, that's the productive way to say finding random stuff on the internet, I think. And then uh, using social networking and having fun without the internet. Uh, which is, I think this one's one of my favorites and probably more of uh, where Colin's expertise is going to lie and then exploring computers as a hobby. So we'll talk about each of these and break them into subcategories. But the first one is just this idea of that if you're looking for entertainment, your computer or, I mean, these uh, mobile phones now are basically a computer in your hand. 
So you don't have to look much further than that in order to find ways to be entertained. So no matter, no matter what you like to do, we've got a whole bunch of options that you can come up with. You can check out new games. You can chat with your friends. You can learn new stuff. You can explore computers. You can learn about building them, making yours go faster, making yours go better, making the graphics nicer. You can find ways to watch just funny videos or create even your own content to share. Maybe you're an expert in an area um, from a career that you'd like to share with people that maybe the career doesn't exist anymore and it's a lost art or maybe it's just something people still need to learn how to do. And then as long as your computer works, you'll never have to be bored again. So whether you have the internet or not, we're going to teach you options on things that you can do. So the first one is probably what I spend most of my time doing is watching videos and listening to music. Uh, this used to be kind of reverse. I used to use my computer almost just to listen to music all the time. And then as bandwidth has gotten wider and data has traveled faster, um, it's been easier and easier to get access to videos now. So we're going to talk about some of the different ways that you can watch videos and listen to music online. So the kind of the king of media right now, I would say on you is uh, for watching videos is going to be YouTube. And um, this has a wide variety of videos and it has anything you'd like to see from silly videos of cats making weird noises to actual footage of the Apollo mission. <clears throat> um, my youngest daughter was trying to learn how to play a game that she has on the Xbox and couldn't get past a certain wave. And I was like, well, let's YouTube it. So we got to watch somebody else play the video game and figure out how to get past this level that she was stuck at. Um, I recently took up archery as a hobby. So I've been learning on everything from how to practice to how to build your arrows. Um, you can learn how to fix cars. We make jokes in my industry, I actually work for Master Electric. So we make jokes that people are a YouTube certified electrician um so there's some things that people will call and i was like hey rather than paying 95 dollars an hour for an electrician to come out and do it you know it probably wouldn't be bad if a bad idea if you just watched youtube and learned how to unscrew and screw on a smoke detector so um there's a ton of different content out there everything from super professional to super entertaining you just look for a topic that you're interested in by using a good search term and you'll be able to see channels <clears throat> once you get to a good channel that you like you can either subscribe to get more content from that person um, and you can ask for notifications. So whenever that person posts new content, you can be notified. Some people will post live content so you can know when they're online and when they're streaming and you can see stuff that they do. So um, a lot of comedians have their own channels. So if you like that comedian and he's streaming a show, he or she's streaming a show um, or a musician, uh, NPR has this new, well, I don't know how new it is, but I've recently found it, which it's the combination of music and videos is NPR, National Public Radio, will do, uh, it's called Tiny Desk Concerts. So they bring in whole bands and they actually sit behind a little desk at the NPR studios and put on a show. They play three or four songs live and uh, I've really enjoyed it. So um, yeah, it's been around since like 2012, Trevor. Uh, thanks. Just jumping into the bandwagon. <laughs> <laughs> the, the Tiny Desk Concerts at NPR, have they always been on YouTube? Uh, yeah, they've been, they've been posting them on there for a long time well, I, have a, I have a good library that i've been able to go back and enjoy i don't know how often they post them but i've really started to like them <laughs> oh there's so many great every time i find a new uh artist that i haven't been exposed to i'll i'll find that they've already done a tiny desk concert and i can go back and and find those <laughs> deep cuts it's great yeah that's what i found too was that i mean I, I would say i have a pretty eclectic taste in music and almost every one of the artists i found on uh, that they've already done a tiny desk concert on npr so it's been really cool well, I'll, I know I'll have to dive a little deeper into the library now. Um, so I mentioned the gaming part. If you're into gaming at all, uh, online gaming, there's really cool tips and tricks on how to do it, or you can watch other people. Um, my son dives way too far into the YouTube gaming. Like he has <laughs> friends or people that he follows that like have entire servers full of the games that he plays. And he will just watch them for hours. And I'm like, what are you doing? Like, you don't even build any of this stuff. Like, why are you watching this? But um, it's a little hypnotic, but if you want to look for specific content, including live streams of watching people play video games or um, watching them show you how to do stuff on certain video games, it's a great way to do it. So YouTube's kind of the king of the digital media for music and videos right now. Something else you can do, which I have, um, I have a buddy that does this for his work and then his personal stuff, but I really think I'm the only person that subscribes to his channel, but it's a cool way, an easy way for him to share the videos with me. Um, is make your own videos on YouTube. So 
Um, not only can you watch other people on YouTube, but you can record yourself and all you have to have is a mobile device in your account and uh, you can film stuff and put it up on YouTube and see if anybody will watch it. So I'll talk a little bit more about that in the next slide. So if you wanna go viral, so viral is a term that um, when you post something online and hundreds or thousands of people watch it and look at it, a great way to have fun on your computer is learning how to make your own videos and putting them online. So here's some things that you could do if you wanted to make your own video and see if other people have interests or if you would come up and on their search engine. So um, you could review your favorite food or drink. Uh, I think during this pandemic time, cocktails have become, I, I don't know, somebody who told me a statistic this weekend about like what the percentage of mixers is up in on sales right now for drinks. And so I guess a lot of people are making cocktails um, through the pandemic and some pretty creative stuff. Um, if you sing, dance, or play instruments, those make really good videos. Uh, if you have funny skits with your friends, uh, read poetry, uh, read stuff that you wrote yourself. Uh, if you want to go through your wallet and describe what's inside, I, I did literally watch a video of a lady today was what's in her archery bag. So she has a bag that she carries with her whenever she goes to shoot archery, and it's just called a bag dump. So she unzipped her bag and showed you all the tools that she carried with her and fletchings and little pieces of her bow and arrow kit. Um, and people do that even uh, when people get new mail, like there's usually videos on like, it's called an unboxing and they'll literally like go to their door, get their package, put it on their table. And then it's just a video of them opening their mail and opening their package. So um, you never know what's going to be a hit. Um, a haul video. So to show like what you got at the grocery store, at the library or at the mall, if you got stuff on sale. Um, or if you have a life hack, if you have a simpler way to do something um, than other people have doing it, I've seen some cool stuff on like how to get snow off of your roof or um, even how to tie your shoes. There's people that have interesting ways on how to lace your shoes or do new things that way. So how to tape your hockey stick, all those kind of things. So if you have something that makes life a little bit easier, you can make a YouTube video about it. So watching movies online, so besides just videos, uh, YouTube's great for those short attention spans or when you just have a couple of minutes uh, in between something that you want to kill time. There's a lot of streaming movie services, and this is one of those topics I think we've done an entire class on. So like how to cut the cord is a term that you may have heard recently or a, a while ago. I've done it since about 05, um, but getting rid of your cable bill and just finding a way to watch the movies and shows that you want to watch. So um, each of these has a link, as I was talking about earlier. So if you wanted to click on any of these and find more information about them, you could. So the sites that have a large selection of high quality movies and uh, that you don't have to shell out a lot of cash, the pay sites are Netflix, which uh, they're creating their own content and have contracts with large studios. Um, pretty good stuff there. Hulu has agreements all the way to almost being like a cable service where they have agreements with the big network channels like CBS, NBC, ESPN, and you can subscribe to services that will allow you to have access to all their channels. Amazon Prime is really cool. They produce a lot of their own content now too and have agreements with major networks so you can get a little different content there. Um, Disney Plus, I haven't had a lot of access to, but I'm always excited about it because they have shows that I'm like, ooh, that looks really good. But I'm like, oh, it's on Disney Plus. And I already have subscriptions to those first three. So I have a hard time being like, okay, if we get into the point that I'm paying for seven or eight subscriptions, I might as well have cable TV again. So, um, and then HBO Now and HBO Go, I've been in and out of, but HBO, the content isn't really family friendly and I have three small kids at home. So there's not a lot on HBO that I think it'd be really great if it was just me and my wife around picking out shows, but with three small kids around the house, HBO doesn't have a lot of uh, family friendly programming. And then some other, these, uh, the Vimeo one, I think Vimeo is kind of the up and comer of uh, like trying to challenge YouTube. Vimeo has done um, a lot of uh, sports coverage for like local sports, a lot of high schools and element like middle schools and stuff actually were casting their games on Vimeo when people couldn't go to games this last year. And then, uh oh, did we lose Colin? Colin's back. What happened, Colin? Sorry, I don't It's some kind of a blip there. All right. Um, and then those other two services on um, there, I actually hadn't heard of, so I was going to lean on Colin. Uh, besides Vimeo, if he had seen Folk Streams or Metacafe, I actually haven't used those, so I didn't know if Colin, if you had any experience with those two. I'm not familiar with those, no. Okay. 
So um, Medic, Medic Cafe I've heard of, but it's not something I've used. So really? some of this stuff, I, I'll be fully transparent that some of this is going to be a little use at your own risk. Um, if you don't feel comfortable with it, I'm not saying all of this is 100% safe. I'm just giving you options. So I can tell you the stuff that I've tried and Colin can tell you the stuff he's tried. If there's anything that we see that has a red flag or that you should be cautious of, we'll let you know. Um, but some of this is new and new stuff out there and new stuff happens all the time on the internet. So like NPR concerts, apparently not new, <laughs> but, um, we'll talk to some other stuff. So listening to online music, um, we'll talk about another way to do it offline later, but, um, this is some cool services that you can use to listen to online music and they have everything from music channels to your favorite artists to concerts, etc. So uh, these are some of the top music services I've seen on here, and they've been around uh, for quite a while. And it, these services have changed how we buy music. They've closed down record stores, obviously, the way we listen to music. And um, so Pandora Radio is a great online music service. It has some uh, algorithms, I guess, to determine you, you tell it that you like this song or don't like that song. Oh, geez, Colin's blipping out all over the place. Yeah, I'm sorry. Um, I'm not sure what's going on. Okay. But you're still here. Did you get kicked off last time? Uh, it signed me back in right away. Oh, okay. Um, but Pandora is a great service as far as uh, there is a free version of Pandora and you get commercials. About every three or four songs, it'll play a commercial. But um, there's also a subscription service and by paying for a premium service, you get rid of the ads and uh, you can create channels there too. So you can say, I want uh, play easy listening music. You can say, play instrumental music, play today's top 40. And then you can say, play music that I like and, uh, or, or type in those kind of things. It'll give you good playlists and setup. So did they cut you out, Colin? Are you still good? I'm still here. I just got to reshare here. Okay, sorry. Uh, Spotify is another one real similar to Pandora. Apple Music, if you remember iTunes a long time ago, Apple Music has kind of taken over iTunes. So it's not as much about buying individual songs and individual albums anymore as much as it is having like an access to the entire Apple Music library and their streaming services. You can still buy the songs and have them, but I think they're getting more based towards just having a subscription service. So you can download the stuff while you have a subscription but it would go away if you canceled your subscription. Uh, SoundCloud, and then the last two I haven't heard of. I don't know, Colin, if you have any experience with Bandcamp or that Piff. Yeah, Bandcamp is actually a, a nice uh, platform. I don't know if Colin's just getting kicked out or if that's all he had to say. I don't know either. He shows us being there. Colin! <laughs> I guess he didn't have much to say. I, that's not true. Colin always has a lot to say. Where did you go? Oh, hopefully that's on his end. And I think he's, he's not at the office. He's at home because when he's at the office, we get to see him. But when he's at home, we don't get to see him. Hey, I'm going to, I'm going to restart my router here, Trevor. Okay. And see, see if there's something going on there. Do you want to uh, share sure. from share the PowerPoint from your screen? Yeah, I can do that. It'll take me just a second, but I can do that for sure. Currently on slide 11. Okay. All right. Is my screen showing up? Yep, you're up. All right, slideshow. Beginning. I'm going to see if I can fix my own tech problem quick. So, uh, 
<laughs> I'll be back in a second. All right, thanks, Colin. All right, so sorry about that. I think it's always ironic when we teach a computer class and have technical problems. So thank you for bearing with us. Um, so uh, we missed out on Colin's input on the Bandcamp and the DATPIF, but we can revisit that. There's lots of options out there. So this one's a neat one, but you should plan on having some time on your hands if you're going to dive into them because um, so YouTube used to only allow like less than five minute videos and, or, or like 15, I think. So it was really cool because you could just log in and watch a short clip and know that you're going to get some information. But as time has gone on, YouTube now is like hour long videos and 39 minute videos and it, it gets a little bit longer. But when you could just get a lot of information in that short time span, um, it was a really effective way to learn stuff. Now, podcasts are a great way to learn stuff. But plan on each one being 20 to 20 minutes to about an hour or sometimes longer. This is a great place to get information. I do a lot of, um, there was a guy named Zig Ziglar who was a motivational speaker. Um, I kind of got started in podcasts by listening to him. And he calls it Car University, which is if you are a salesperson like myself, and you spend a lot of time in your car, you might as well spend that time learning something because you're going to be in there a lot and you can only listen to music so much. So um, I also had a friend that was a musician and he taught me and so he spent a lot of time on the road and he taught me that when you listen to like talk radio or information, uh, your body actually does a better job of staying awake because you'll fall asleep to like rhythmic music. So if you have a long drive, I found that podcasts are a great way to make the time pass. So uh, my wife and kids would disagree, <laughs> but they're stuck in the car and I get control of the radio. So, um, but it's great for conversation, learning tools. Uh, there's lots of different information on there. So some of the ones I listen to is I'm in a networking group and they give tips on how to do better networking. Um, I like to shoot sporting clays, so shotgun sports, and there's a great one on that. Um, and then I do listen to some motivational stuff. There's a, there's Dr. Sindra Kampoff who's a local person from MSU and helps does the motivational speaking for like the, uh, the Mavericks as well as the Vikings. And she has a podcast and it's really helpful information. So, uh, those are some of the main ones I listen to. And then NPR and, uh, NPR Minnesota public radio. Uh, I listen to those, they have a song of the day. And so they download a song of the day or they have um, DJs that'll just play like an hour long set and you get to listen to what those DJs like to listen to. So those are some of the podcasts that I like to listen to. Um, think of them as free radio shows that cover different topics. So you can find podcasts on anything from Apple Music and Spotify, um, but you can also find them on Podcast One or Podbay. There's this free information in a lot of places and a lot of them sell advertising. So somewhere in their podcast, they might have to plug an ad or for something, but um, these are some of the places, this American life. A lot of people have heard of that radio show. If you've listened to this American life, they have a podcast. Um, and then some of these other ones that are on here, hardcore history, stuff you should know um, all great avenues to get the podcast material uh, that you'd like to do. So um, you can listen to those on your computer. You can download them to a device. Uh, and I download them to a device and bring them into my car. And it works out really cool. So playing games on your computer is something not new. It's been around for a long time. But if you don't, uh, if you need some way to kill some time on your computer, playing games is a cool way to do it. Uh, Microsoft has developed a platform that you can not only play games on your computer, but you can sync your computer to your Xbox if you have an Xbox and you can actually play the same games on your Xbox that you can play on your computer, which is kind of fun. Um, and you can do it from a distance and it's a neat way to connect with people in a new and unique way. Um, if you're looking for some places to find out, uh, find some cool games. This, these are some locations that you can go to. Um, so the cool thing about games that you play online is that it's a neat way to interact with your friends. And you can do, like, I play dominoes online. So maybe you like to play dominoes or hearts or pfeffer. Um, you can play those games online and get together with friends or people that you would usually play with and still play those games. Uh, not quite the same as sitting around a card table and playing with some friends at a cabin or um, whatnot, but it is a, a unique way to do it. And you can kind of log in anytime and either play with a group of new people that you've never met or play with friends that you've played games with for a long time, but maybe just aren't, can't get together. So um, some of the games that people also play, RPG, that's an acronym for role-playing game. So 
Um, some of the popular ones there, Fortnite. My kids all play Minecraft, which is this game you can build an entire world out of. It's crazy. World of Warcraft. And then there's um, a database of free games. So there's services that like software companies that will actually publish nothing but video games that you can play on your computer. So the most popular one I know of is Steam. Um, I've got a young daughter that really likes to play Roblox and I have a small group of friends that really like these 8-bit games, which is the old, really big pixelated graphics, but um, some cool places. Those are all hyperlinked, so if you wanted to see what those games are like, you can click on them if you have the presentation on your computer and uh, you can find out more information about those. Um, if we haven't done a whole <coughs> presentation on this one yet, um, we have spent a lot of time on these games based on uh, security and on entertainment. So I am not a big fan of personally of Facebook games, but if you're already on Facebook, then you kind of know that you get really good at tracking what you do, who you, what you look at, who you talk to, and then suggesting information based on your online habits. And I feel like the Facebook games give the developers of those games a lot of information based on who you are, what you do, how much time you spend playing the game, what other kind of things you look at, who your friends are, et cetera. So um, games inside of social media platforms make me a little nervous, but I know a lot of people that play them and uh, I think the security measures have gotten a lot better, but I still would be kind of, weary about them just because social media platforms do track your data information and usually to play these games um the apps will ask like can we have access to your profile and your name and your real picture and stuff and it just seems like it's a way that you could be a little more a bit more secure by not playing these games but as long as you have a facebook account um you can get into these games single and multiplayer games um, if you want to see a list of them, here's a hyperlink right here. So when you're, when you're got the presentation open and you click over facebook.com games, it'll take you right to the link. Um, some of the other games that were fun are words with friends, candy crush Farmville was really huge for a long time. I don't know if people are still playing it, but, um, they're all really addictive and really good at helping you kill time. Um, Steam is a, like I mentioned, it's an, it's a service that you can use um, and you download it and then it gives you access to games. Most of them are free, uh, but they do have some premium content as well and some advertising, but there are some really cool interactive games on here. So if you want instructions on how to use Steam, you can click on these links and it'll give you uh, instructions on how to use, how to install Steam on your computer and then how to get games from there. These are some of the games that are on here and Colin was making fun of me because these are their most popular games are Counter-Strike, Team Fortress, Grand Theft Auto, Player Unknown Battlegrounds. So, um, but maybe you have uh, grandkids or nieces or nephews or even your kids coming over and they're looking for something to do on a computer on a rainy day. Um, this would be a way to put these kind of things on your computer to use. Uh, if you're interested in designing your own video game, like it doesn't have to be super complex. It could just be a card game. Like uh, I don't know how many other people have heard of it. My wife and her family play this card game called Sandy's Game. I don't know anybody outside of her family that knows how to play it. And so I always just think they're cheating when they make up the rules as they go along. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> if you have a card game that maybe you and all your friends play and you can develop the rules, um, you could design a game as simple as that, or if you wanted to develop a game where it's uh, people are interacting and playing and doing stuff, um, you've got to learn a little bit about coding and how to interact with the computer, but <clears throat> there are ways to do it. So I'll show you some of the tools that you can use. Uh, Trevor. Yeah. Hi. Um, Hi, Colin. I, I think you're, uh, you're showing your, uh, your, uh, the wrong screen for your you're not uh -oh. showing the presentation side you're showing the uh, preview side oh can i stop sharing are you ready to share <laughs> uh, yeah i can uh okay give me one sec here hopefully it's not like a, a problem with the uh my neighborhood internet or something yeah um but it seems to be seems to be holding so far 
we're gonna be uh doing these in, in uh person soon enough so <laughs> again maybe next month mike you said possibility based on scheduling that's the hope yeah okay Slight, slightly uh slightly less capacity for error in that case <laughs> What, uh, let's see, what? 21. 21. It looks really good on my screen when I was sharing it. <laughs> I'm sure. All right. Oh, and now we're back to... There we go. So um, MIT has developed a game uh, game site, game development site called Scratch. And uh, if you want to find out more information on it, you can click on that link and it'll allow you to create a game that you and other people can play. You can talk to other people, um, play each other's games. Um, it can be a lot of fun. And especially if you like playing games online or like developing games. So something worth checking out. Colin, have you ever experienced, played with that one at all? MIT Scratch? I haven't. There were a couple others around, uh, like probably ten or twelve years ago. Now that were different, like kinds of platforms that made it easy to to design your own types of games, um, and just like providing tools for it. Right. Um. So lots of and physics generators and things like that that were fun to play around with. You just you know can can do experiments with pouring sure. sand down your screen and things like that. Yep. Yeah, my kids have to do a lot of that actually for their science class, especially with the online part of it now. They were doing, you know, create a ramp and you had to drop a ball and you could, you could work with the physics of the ramp to make the ball do different things. So um, one of the things that I bet everyone here has experience with is just finding random stuff on the internet. So um, every now and then, if I'm not looking for something specific, I will literally just go to like the Google homepage and look for what other articles are posted up around um, sometimes they're based on my search habits. Sometimes it's just totally random. Um, but just cruising around on the internet and clicking on links and trying to find stuff, um, that you're interested in is, it can be really fun. So we'll talk about some of the ways that you can do that. So if you want to go online shopping, but not buy anything, that's something you can do is fill up a cart, but not actually spend any money. Um, you can poke around and price compare anything from clothes or shoes. Um, you can even look at real estate, land plots, condominiums. You can make out a wish list of everything you want and then just, uh, you know, be careful and don't plan on uh, maxing out your credit card. But something fun that you can do. I did it. Uh, my daughter needed hiking boots uh, for an event that we're going to do in June. So uh, went on the Shields website, went on just Google hiking boots for girls, ended up at the uh, Cabela's and Shields website and I found the shoes were $10 cheaper at Cabela's than they were at Shields. Shields didn't have them in stock, went in there today though, ordered them and got them to price match the Cabela's price. So, um, you know, we were in and out of Shields in five minutes, but I probably spent an hour and a half last night researching what kind of hiking boots we wanted, but saved 10 bucks by doing it. So it was worth it. <laughs> Um, this one's kind of fun. If you haven't experimented with Google Earth, um, other than just typing in directions to get maps, it, it's pretty cool. So you can do things not only about planning a vacation, but you can actually kind of sightsee and do some cool stuff on Google Earth. So if you come across things that you might actually really like to go see, um, you can use Google Maps and Google Earth to explore cities, um, explore local landmarks. And then when you get to those landmarks, usually they're linked to articles that you can read more about what's happening on those landmarks. So you can literally like take a virtual vacation from your living room uh, or your office, and then you could actually plan it if you wanted to. So you could go to Expedia and start pricing plane tickets. Um, I've watched a lot of YouTube shorts lately that they're showing videos on how to get the cheapest flights. And if you have flexibility or how to get the cheapest rental car. So um, there's tips and tricks for all that stuff. Uh, Airbnb, VRBO, there's an app called Couchsurfer. So once you know where you want to go, you can start looking at different ways to go on your dream vacation. Something fun to do on the computer. Um, learn magic tricks. My, 
I, I would share a joke that my son learned today, and I'm not sure where he learned it, but um, he also has learned some cool magic tricks along the way. So um, it, it's, it's kind of a bummer when you figure out how a magic trick actually works, but when you get to show it to other people, it's kind of cool. I'm not sure. There's a website, and Colin, I won't pronounce it right. I don't know if you have experience with it, but it's Omegle, and I don't know, O-M-E-G-L-E, -E, I think. Yeah. And I think that's just a social media site, but every time I see it, it's somebody doing a magic trick. Yeah, it's a it's like a random video chat site. Okay. So it like just randomly pairs you up with uh anybody else who's on the app at a certain time. And so okay. there's there's some like uh some close magic people who like to, you know, do these chat sessions with people and do magic tricks because it gives them a, an opportunity to get a reaction out of somebody and then they can record it and, and yeah. share it on social media and stuff. One other thing in that vein, actually, that I, I wanted to toss in, but uh, didn't really get the chance. But in terms of finding random uh, websites, uh, there's a uh, an application uh, that's actually an add-on for Google Chrome that I used to use uh, years ago called StumbleUpon. Um, and it's basically it's just a button that you can add to your, your Chrome browser and you just hit it and it takes you to a random page on the internet. <laughs> um, and I mean, it's, uh, if you're truly interested in just finding out, you know, what's out there uh, and, and the, uh, how many strange things you can find on the internet, that's, uh, that's one you can definitely follow down a rabbit hole. That one's really cool. Um, so there's different ways to learn card tricks too. So Wikipedia is kind of, if you've heard of Wikipedia, that's a really great information source that's uh, publicly sourced. So people just provide information to it. Um, and so WikiHow is actually where I got almost all this presentation from was how can we use your computer for fun? So WikiHow helped me guide this presentation. Um, but you can also go to WikiHow to learn how to do magic tricks. So um, going all the way back to those first couple slides we did, where if you wanted to make your own video of you trying out a magic trick that you learned on the internet, it's all things that you could do that would be fun on the computer. Checking out some art. Now, Colin, I missed on, I know we talked about it a long time ago, but there was like some museum tours. Like, I don't know if it was the Louvre or the Guggenheim or something, but there was some. Yeah, so actually the Google team, the same folks who do the Street View project where, where you can you know, you can walk down the streets of Mankato, but you can also walk down the streets of, of Reykjavik, basically, on your computer and look around. Oh, Colin has so much to provide, and I think his internet's just chopping out. Like, he's, and I can tell he's super excited about this topic, too, so it's a, kind of a bummer. Um. I'm going to give him a second, but I'm going to message him again and just say, oh, we lost you. Oh, Colin's not in the meeting anymore. <laughs> oh, well, sure. I see him here. Yeah, I know, but it's. Uh, I tried to send him a message and said he's not in this meeting. Oh. Oh, maybe he's back. Nope. No. Mm -hmm. All right. I will uh, in person. That's telling us that this is yeah. This is saying that uh, it's time to get back in person. Um, like Jeremy and his VHS tapes. Right. It's time to move on. Sorry, Jeremy. Did I uh, did I cut out again? We lost you again, Colin. Yeah, sorry about that. Uh, it must right. be something going on with my the bandwidth in my neighborhood. Because are you going to take over the? Uh... I was trying, but now I have. Now you got me off. Uh, frazzled. Frazzled because uh, of what screen I was sharing. <laughs> so I'm going to try. Tell me if I have the right one. Is the right screen sharing this time? Yep, yep, that looks good. Okay, so uh, I, go I, I was gonna say about the art though. I'll try yeah. to spit this out quickly. Uh, <laughs> the Google team uh, basically has uh, 
like street view presentations of the interiors of uh, the Louvre, uh, the British Museum in London, the Met in New York. So all of these amazing uh, permanent collections that you can basically go and click through just like you're walking through the gallery. Um, and then you can also like zoom in. They have super high definition pictures of some of these masterpieces. Um, so it's a really cool way, uh, especially in a year like this where folks, you know, might not get to travel that you can you can check out a museum or a famous museum that you haven't been to or one that you've been to and you just missed. Yeah, and I think uh, I mean, I don't know if I would call it art, but I know there was some live stream stuff, too. I'm, I'm thinking of like the they had the eagle's nest there for a little while and somebody had a fish tank. And I know the Mars rover stuff is real big right now. So. I think there's, um, I don't know if I necessarily call that art, but like some performance work that you could log in and check out live. So speaking of performance art and making art yourself, um, there are lots of different ways to do drawings online and painting services that range from like just silly stick figure drawings to like high level, high graphic quality professional art. Um, some of the ones that you can start with that are real easy is like Sketchpad. Um, SketchUp is one that I think a trial version usually comes of this with Microsoft and it's uh, like a 3D modeling or I don't know what the 3D modeling software that Windows 10 used to kind of come with. Um, and then there's another one that's called GIMP. Uh, that's a graphics editor that's comparable to Photoshop. And then there's another one uh, that I haven't used that's for towards drawing and painting. So. Um, there's really cool ways you can manipulate your own photos and stuff, which we'll talk about. But if you're good at drawing and you have the right tools, um, there's a lot of stuff you can do online, uh, making your own art. So even animating your own art or using 3D stuff. So learning something new, again, with Google Earth, this is a really cool way um, by exploring Google Earth. <laughs> One of the fun things, and I don't, Colin probably has a shortcut to the idea of it, but I know there's like I wouldn't call them like goofs or something, but there's like people that knew when the Google Earth camera was gonna be over their building. And so like they've been on top of the roof and made a sign or they've been standing in a window when the car's drove, driven by and done something funny or there's just people that have just been straight been caught doing weird stuff when the Google Earth camera was flying over. So I don't know where you would exactly find the collection of those, but um, I definitely have seen there's plenty of them. There's some message boards and there's a bunch of articles about these things, like like little Easter eggs or like, like you know, you'll find like a cruise missile in flight, like over U the Utah proving grounds. Um, mm -hmm. And there's a, a ton, you know, they take a ton and a ton of photographs. So there's lots of weird stuff on there. Um, so if you ever Google like, like Google Earth oddities or uh, Google Earth Easter eggs, you can find a lot of links to to weird stuff like that yeah so they're and they're pretty neat and um like i said some of them are intentional and some of them are not i think uh i, I don't know if i've seen the Loch Ness monster but i definitely have seen some people like take pictures of stuff that they've seen in the ocean so it's like a google earth image of the middle of the ocean they're like what is this in the middle of the ocean so um i don't know if i have that much time to cruise around the entire world looking for stuff like that but somebody did but you can get an up close look at almost any place that you want to go. Uh, you can use the street view now, like Colin was talking about, to walk on the streets of Tokyo. You can look for famous people's homes. Um, you can look at your own house and see if anyone left a window open. Uh, if you want to test your geography skills, there's a game called GeoGuessr, which presents you with random Google Earth street picture and makes you guess where in the world it is. Um, and it, it's a game, so you can play that and see how well you do. Uh, this was a new one, Colin. Have you heard this term? You probably have. You're super smart and online all the time. Have you heard of a listicle? Oh, yeah. The, the BuzzFeed sort of coined this like, like 10, 15 years ago when, when they were doing all their top 10 lists. I feel old. I feel like I just missed out on like 10 years of technology. I don't know. Like ever since I moved to Mankato, I just feel like my vibe on what was going on in the world just kind of hit the brakes. But um, when you want to see a list of the 25 best sandwiches in the world, um, the top 20 toys that kids loved in the 90s, like Colin said, BuzzFeed is kind of who generated this. Upworthy, Board Panda, all sites have hilarious and interesting facts, lists of random things that you didn't know you cared about. So cool way to kill time and not think about anything too hard. No, get away from all the political stuff and scary virus stuff. Um, local news, 
So KYC, um, whoever it is, whatever news station that you like to watch, uh, the free press has some information out on the, on the web. So you can find your local news source online, read up on the stories that matter the most, look at the uh, interesting people, engage with local news sources. Um, my boss doesn't like to read news articles as much as he just likes to read the comments after the headlines and then determine if he wants to read the articles from there. So if you're looking for something entertaining, read the comment section after a news article about something uh, highly charged and you will find all the entertainment you need in a day, I promise you. So, um, but it's a cool way to use the internet to learn about what's going on around you. Or if you want to pick somewhere else or somewhere else you were from, it might be more interesting. So um, take an online course. So if you wanted to actually get full on into the education mode, you could find out a free online course um, massively open online courses or MOOCs are free, easy to find. It's like you could take classes from Harvard, but right there in your own living room. So this probably all got really big in the last year where people were stuck at home and needed to find ways to take online courses. Um, but it's, I, it's a unique opportunity. Some people do really well with this sort of interaction in education and some people don't do as well, but if you're interested in learning, gaining some formal education, it's a fun way to do it. Um, blogs is something we've talked about a lot um, in all of our classes. We've mentioned blogs in a lot of different arenas, but uh, there might be something specialty that you like. And after you're done making a video about it, watching videos about it, listening to podcasts about it, um, you might actually want to see if there's a community of people that are writing about it specifically. So. Um, if it's gaming, these are some of the gaming blogs that are out there. If it's music, you might, I'm sure NPR has a music blog. Um, here's some other ones like Colin talked about Bandcamp, I think was one he was starting to do, talk about. Um, you can find a community with like-minded interests. So it might be you like to fix up cars or it might be, um, you like to shoot bow and arrow or it might be you like to sew or embroider or. Um, whatever it is, there's probably a blog out there to help you find a community of people that are posting questions about it. Um, and when I talk about like fixing cars, it might not even be fixing cars. It might be, you might find somebody that likes to fix 1967 Mustang Shelby GTs. And there could be a whole community of people that are interested in just fixing that kind of car. Um, I hadn't heard of this one, Colin, but this seems like might be right up your alley is just using the Wayback Machine to find out what the internet used to be like 10, 15 years ago. So, oh yeah, uh, it's, it's awesome. <laughs> so if you're curious about what the internet looked like 10 or 15 years ago, there's a handy way to travel back through time and you can click on this link if you open it as a presentation. Um, the Internet Archive has built a tool that lets you access old versions of websites. So um, if you didn't, you if you weren't really into computers 10 or 15 years ago, and you are into them now, might be a fun way to look back and say, what was it like when I wasn't using a computer, or what was it like back then? Um, wikis and blogs have that similar kind of contribution. If you have really informa really good information that you'd like to share, um, wikis, forums, blogs are all ways that you can use. Um, online resources to help other people that generate content and want to do essential tasks from, you know, how to change a tire, um, how to sew a zipper, uh, you name it. There's communities out there that are looking to develop new content and get better and better at doing it. So um, it can be fun and rewarding and create a whole new avenue of people that you might be able to connect with online. Using social networking, this is definitely one we've done an hour long presentation, I think at least once if not twice a year since we started doing this. Um, so the, the number of ways you can participate in social media is humongous. So Facebook, Twitter. Um, so you've probably heard of most of these before, but um, you can try some goals by doing stuff like look at Uber facts and see which one of your, you and your friends can come up with the most random fact to talk about. Um, you can share links, pictures, and videos. I've got a couple of groups of friends that we have chat messaging and it's almost all gifts and memes, um, which are funny. Um, see if you can find ways to make your friends laugh. I like to send things to people that it's, um, things that remind me of them from a long time ago. So whether it's a song or a dance or something. 
my kids love, well, my youngest one especially loves Facebook Messenger because they have these silly filters where you can turn yourself into a rabbit or a unicorn or whatever. And my daughter does this to my grandma or to my mom the whole time she's talking to her on Facebook Messenger. And my grandma just like, my mom looks like she's just getting dizzy the whole time, but um, kind of fun stuff. And then if you're feeling lonely, you can video chat with your friends, uh, give them a call and just hang out with them. I actually called one of my electricians on video chat today because he sent me back to the shop to be like, hey, go get me this ladder. And then I got here and was like, I don't know what kind of ladder you want. So I FaceTimed him and showed him the picture. I was like, okay, here's all the ladders we have at the shop. Which one do you want? So um, it can be helpful. I've also, I used to work for a water company in town, McGowan Water. And I know Mike walked me through like resetting a timer at Daly Park one time when he's like, okay, take off the cover, move this screw, move that knob. So um, if you have a friend that you know is really good at doing something, using those messenger chats and stuff can be cool. Um, if you haven't had a Facebook account yet, um, creating one isn't difficult. And again, to do those games that we talked about earlier, you would need a Facebook account to use Facebook Messenger. You need a Facebook account. So great way to kill some time. Uh, most of the people I know are trying to get rid of it because they find it kills a little too much time. But you can upload content, check other people's updates, talk to your friends instantly. Um, it's a neat way to catch up with other people that you may not have talked to in a long time. Um, it's also can have its own challenges, I think, in that it feels like, oh, I know somebody, I know what they're up to, so I don't really need to call them and talk to them, where sometimes it's a little better to actually connect with them in person or over the phone, but um, ways to change your feed, you can do some deep digging into someone that you didn't know, you can search information that you hadn't searched before, and then, like I said, adding your own content, so people that time, spend time looking at other people's content um, have less that says that they're more depressed than people that do post their own content. So make sure that you're not just spending all your time looking at other people's stuff, post interesting stuff on your own. Make sure that it looks cool or that you have neat stuff to talk about. Uh, tweets. Uh, I have a Twitter account. I don't really tweet, but uh, it's kind of an interesting forum because you only have 140 characters, I think, to say stuff. And this is where the hashtag culture has kind of come from. And, uh, but you can make a Twitter account. You can follow, this is mostly, I would like say, you get a lot of celebrities and athletes that post information on here. But if you're interested in learning more about them, that's a good way to do it. Uh, a lot of people just post stuff of what they're doing or where they're at. Um, you can build up followers and you can look at uh, who's posting ridiculous stuff and then a lot of people get into arguments on there and I wouldn't recommend that. So especially there's some certain celebrities that really like to argue with people. And uh, I think there's people out there called trolls that just say stuff to get those kind of fights going. And I try to stay away from all that stuff. Um, Yelp is kind of a cool thing. And there's plenty of places in Mankato that have uh, reviews by Yelp. So if you go to a restaurant in town and you have an amazing experience, um, or you go to a store in town and you have an amazing experience or out of town even. Uh, this is a cool play way to look at um, places that you go to that you really like and that you think other people should find out about. If you have a friend that's starting a new business and they do something really good and cool, this is a good way to spread the word about it. If you travel to a new town and you want to know where a good place to go eat is, this is a good app to use. Um, but you can post reviews about all these kind of things. So um you could put you can put those reviews online and it's a great way to uh kill some time google has some good reviews too if you use google reviews that's a good way to let people know that you like something and then facebook has reviews for uh places too so it's all good ways to share if you're trying to help build somebody's business um and it's it can be very damaging if you shred somebody's business so before you post bad reviews, I recommend that you do talk to the owner or talk to the person that you worked with and say, look, I didn't have a bad experience. How can you make this right? And uh, see if they can help you before you go posting stuff that you might need to take down later. <clears throat> Pinterest is something that one, we make fun of my boss because he uh, has a Pinterest account, but two, my 12 year old daughter is on Pinterest all the time and she loves finding story starters and motivational quotes and all kinds of stuff on Pinterest. In fact, I was a little disturbed to find out only because she's only 12 years old that like if I Google her name, 
she has she's on Pinterest all over the place. It's like six pages of Pinterest of all stuff that she's pinned um, because she's interested in it. But um, it's all cool stuff. So I was okay to track down what she's pinning on Pinterest. But um, I mean, if you think of Pinterest, like it's the old school, like pegboard on your wall that you would put pegs in, uh, like little uh, push pins in of things that you liked. So it's a cool way you can share recipes, uh, designs, fashion, anything you imagine. So like my bosses is, I would say typically Pinterest is kind of more for your craftsy person, but my boss does, he brews wine, he brews beer, he builds guns, he builds decks, he does fireplaces. So like that's all stuff that he does on Pinterest. So um, if you just want to look at cute pictures of cats wearing sweaters, also things that you could just do on Pinterest. Um, special interest message board or uh, these are more kind of like blogs and discussion things that you could do. So message boards is kind of how the internet got started. Uh, and if you can find a topic that you're interested in, then message boards can be hard to get into because they usually have really strict rules on who can be a member and who can post stuff. But if you get involved in one, uh, it's a great way that you can talk about everything from your favorite kind of music to your favorite kind of hobbies. And if you find a good message board related to your interests, uh, you can create an account, usually as simple as using your email. And you can chat with other people that like talking about the kind of stuff you talk about. So everybody here tonight has the internet, but say you're like Colin and the internet goes down in your neighborhood, but you still want to use your computer to do something. Here's some things that you can do without having the internet. We touch on this one briefly in all of our classes, but we don't do a lot of it because so much of it is personal preference. So I have a very strict policy on how many uh, desktop icons I like to have on my desktop, and they all need to be in alphabetical order, and they all need to be in a row. And some people, it looks like a tiled mosaic on their desktop with stuff everywhere and all out of order and not snapped to a grid and not in, yeah, it drives me nuts. Like a messy desktop to me is painful because I have to stare at a computer so much that I want everything to be neat and organized. But um, so changing your desktop or how your appearance looks on your desktop is something that you can do. You can give your computer a makeover. So uh, basically it's called a theme. So you can change your pictures in the background. You can change... <clears throat> on Windows 10, you can change the size of the icons. You can change which ones are in the toolbar, which ones are in the start menu, which ones are live tiles, which ones are regular tiles, what size they are. <laughs> and you can even do that stuff on a Mac as well. Um, you can customize where you want the toolbar, on the bottom, on the top, on the left. Um, you can make it disappear. You can keep it that it shows up all the time. You can change sound schemes so that when you double click on your mouse or open a program, it makes a sound or the cursor can spin around and be a different color. Uh, so you can use different images to make wallpaper. Uh, if you have multiple screens, you can do landscape so that it's like one image, but it goes all the way across all of your screens. So um, there's lots of fun stuff you can do on setting up your desktop and you can spend a lot of time diving into it. Uh, your screensaver is another one. I like to do my screensaver with uh, pictures from my picture library. But unfortunately, most of my pictures now are electrical panels or wire. <laughs> so um, scattered with every now and then pictures of my family. So uh, I have to be a little bit more specific about which folders I want them to pick pictures from. But um, you'd be surprised at how many different kinds of screensavers are out there. And just what you might want it to do when it goes to sleep. It also has your energy saving stuff that you can click on there. So you can download new ones that you can just do a Google search for screensavers. Uh, it could be a slideshow of your pictures or one that makes it look uh, the way they fade in and out. You could do all kinds of cool stuff. <clears throat> this one is uh, just something that you could do if you wanna play a prank on one of your friends is turn the screen upside down. So if you look really specific at this one, you can see that the keyboard's down here, but the icons are upside down and then the search bar is upside down. So if you're interested in doing this to somebody else's computer, just to mess with them, uh, here's how you do it. You press down the control and alt button at the same time and then hit the down button on a PC and it will flip the screen upside down. And then if they're like, what'd you do to my computer? Like if I did this to my mom, she would freak out but you can flip it back to normal by just pressing the control alt button and the up key again. So 
you wanted to mess with somebody, just kind of a fun prank to do, something you can do to change their screen. <clears throat> Listening to music. So we started off the presentation tonight about um, having online services and streaming music. So this would be actually be if you've downloaded music or have burned your CDs to your computer, um, just listening to music that you have in your collection um, sometimes is actually really enjoyable. So uh, rather than a streaming service, you can make a new playlist, you can make a mix of songs. Like if you remember the old uh, making a mixtape, um, you can put your music app and shuffle to listen to songs that you haven't listened to. I keep mine, I have an order of how they're ranked, how old they are, how long it's been since I've listened to the songs, how many times I've skipped them. There's a bunch of different stuff you can do. And then you can change your visual visualizations of what's happening on your screen while music's playing so that you can have something to look at while you're hanging out listening to your music. So kind of fun. <clears throat> Taking some pictures. This is a whole class that we do. Um, and I think we could do it for twice as long as we usually do. But um, if you want to take some pictures, download them to your computer and then edit them. Um, you can use your webcam to take pictures. You can set up weird still life pictures. Um, I keep working with my son. He likes the stop motion pictures with like Legos. And uh, I keep trying to convince him that that'd be something he could figure out how to do. And I think it would take a lot of time, but I think it'd be kind of cool if he figured it out. So um, you can change colors and filters. Lots of stuff you can do with pictures. You can do the rotating, the cropping. Um, but I would recommend that you've either taken our class or you know how to save backup original versions of your pictures uh, before you start editing them and messing with them. So this is the editing photos part. Uh, Photoshop is a usual app that most people have or have a uh, GIMP is the other one. You can cut up pictures and you can make new stuff. You can add words to the bottom, add script. Uh, you can make scrolling messages go across pictures and then you can do stuff like post them to social media or share them with your friends, put them in message boards. Um, a digital diary. So if you remember in the old days, we used to actually write down in a notebook like this with a pen and paper and write about what we were thinking about, what was going on in the day. Uh, you can start doing that digitally now and just keep a word file or uh, you can use writer, notepad, whatever you want. And uh, you can actually just keep track of things that happen on a great day if you have. Um, I used to tell people this when they would have problems with their water softeners. Like, hey, keep track of when you hear it recycling, when you hear it, how, how much salt you're using, those kind of things. Um, and you can do it with your electric too of like, oh, this breaker always trips when I plug in the toaster and the coffee pot at the same time. So the more information you have about stuff like that, or, you know, I get an upset stomach when I eat this, or I drink that, or I take this, I take this vitamin when I have an empty stomach. Um, and then you could turn that into a blog someday. If you have enough interesting information or a video blog, you could put it out on YouTube. Hey guys. Yeah. When you make up a program and you put like the, whatever it is in that last screen, it's in yellow. I don't know about anybody else, but to me, it's really hard to figure out what it says. You yeah, because of the color. Yeah. Yeah. Next next time, I'm sure Trevor will avoid avoid the the yellow. Yeah, the I try to use the green and yellow from the Mankato computer technology theme, but I wasn't really a big fan of how it faded in and out here. So I will try a different one next time. Um, you can record a song if you're somebody that likes to sing. And uh, there's just as much editing software now for uh, music as there was for photos back, or just even editing back in the day. So you can change beats, you can record songs, you can re record your voice over a song, you can layer yourself reading stuff. Um, Apple has an app called GarageBand. I haven't used it, but I've seen some really cool stuff come from it. If you're using Windows, there's an app called Audacity. Uh, recording a podcast. We talked about podcasts. So if you have something that you like to talk about, or you even wanted to record yourself making a mixtape and talk about the songs and where you were when you heard those songs, all things that you could do. You can change speeds, make them faster or slower. So um, we're still pounding through here. We got 
couple more slides to go, but uh, we'll just talk about these ones and we can go back and talk about anything that you wanted to, but um, just learning about computers can be a hobby. So something fun to do. This is where me getting to hang out at Mankato Computer Technology as a customer has been really fun. It's just kind of learning what uh, programming languages might be being used. What's the next thing that they're doing uh, to make web pages with the internet. So um, it creates a skill set for you. And here's some programming languages. If you're interested in getting deep diving into what's going on with computers, Python, C, Java, JavaScript, Ruby. Um, if you want to learn how to code or type in programming languages, here's a link here in yellow um, called Code Academy. And that can give you tutorials on how to do stuff in different programming languages. So if that was something that you wanted to do. Web design uses HTML, which is a, a markup language called Hypertech Markup Language. And this is kind of what it looks like if you were to look at the source code of what a uh, web page looks like. And uh, if you're ever interested in producing a web page, you're going to need to be able to do it. So uh, you could maybe take an online class um, or learn how to HTML code, and then you could learn how to write your own web pages. Uh, operating systems, this was one that I have taken upon myself, and I would say I'm not an expert by any means, but I know how to Google myself through most of my problems, but um, we got my wife a mini Mac, we started with the iPhones, but I've always been a PC and Windows guy, so there's different ways and different things that you do things on a Mac, a little different logic than you do on a PC. We have uh, Windows tablets at my house, we have iPads at my house. So it's a little different logic, but it can be fun and it's a challenge to learn to use if you have one system. Uh, it's a little tricky to learn how to use the other system. If you wanna learn how to run a Mac operating system on a PC, there's ways that you can do that. And uh, there's ways to turn Windows into a Mac as well. So uh, if you're interested in doing something like that, these are a little bit more advanced, but something to do. And then this will be the last one I think that we're going to talk about tonight, but I don't know how easy it is anymore because every time I talk to Colin when I need to get my computer fixed, he talks about how many millions of little screws and how hard it was to get into stuff. But it used to be like one screw and you could take off the cover of your computer and upgrade your memory cards, upgrade your video cards. Um, and it was all snap and plug and play. It was pretty easy, but now they seem to be making it harder and harder to get in and out of your computers. But for desktops, it's all pretty it's all still pretty modular, but for laptops, I would say, uh, uh, you know, practice on an old one. <laughs> <laughs> so things that you can change, you can upgrade a graphics card, sound card, you could change the fan and cooling system, you could add more RAM, um, or you could even change the processor or CPU. So um, like Colin said, if you had some old computers, or I know, I, I don't know exactly what happened, but I know there was a long story about a whole bunch of old stuff that Mankato Computer Technology had in their, uh, in their warehouse there that they had to get rid of. So I don't know what they did with all those old computer parts, but I'm sure somebody somewhere has an old PC that they wouldn't mind if you had took apart and fiddled with it if you really wanted to learn how to do it. So um, sorry to speak so fast and fly through all that stuff. I always have a big goal to go through as many of these as I can, um, just to give you a brief overview. That's kind of it for the presentation. Um, I'd love to get any questions you have about something that we talked about or, you know, feel free to comment with Mike or chat with Mike or us about um, which of these you see that you might like to uh, learn more about in the future. So with like that, Jeremy has we'll... a question. I have three questions. And, and the first one is also for Mike. Um, I, I write r movie reviews and I'd like to get a paying gig writing them. What, what, where should I send them out to samples? Oh boy, that's, that's a tough one, Jeremy, because I don't know who all is doing that type of movie review, especially they might be, uh, subscribed to, a you know, AP and other things for newspapers. You could try the radio stations, eh? I'm not sure if you're going to get a paid gig, though. Oh. Mike, there's a website called IMDB, Independent Movie Database. 
and they're always accepting reviews of movies. And I would say if you wanted to post your reviews on a website like that, that somebody might, it might garner attention based on who reads it. And I would say that would be a good place to start. I don't know if Colin knows of any other movie review websites, but that's one we use all the time and it's a cool place to contribute to. Yeah, Rotten Tomatoes is also another one that's a big, uh, a, a big mix of different reviews from all over the place where, where users can submit. Um, I think even Google Movies now probably have some user review. So there's lots of places you can submit them. Um, as somebody who also has endeavored to get paid doing writing at different times through my life, um, I, I, I don't have any hot tips on that. That's a, that's a Sisyphusian uh, uh, task there to try to get paid for your writing. But if you find out, tell me how. Uh, then um, I, I sometimes take the battery out of my phone in, in hopes that I wouldn't I, I, I'd save power and then I find out that um, I'm losing power anyway. I don't I can't understand how how I could be losing power if my battery's not in my phone. That I'm not sure how how old is your phone, Jeremy? Pretty old, probably ten years old. Okay, I would I would assume it's it's probably just time to replace the battery if you can get a new one because um, it's probably just the cells aren't properly holding the charge anymore. Okay, and then um, I, I I only have some limited data, and so I've been um, not not having my video video going, so people can't see me. Um, and hoping that that, that um, saves data. But I, I can see you. So. Um, yeah, I mean, it will it will reduce the amount of bandwidth you're using by turning off your camera for Zoom uh, by about half. Um, so okay. you, but you, because you still have video going out, you know, it's still going to it's still pretty data intensive. Um, so if it's something where you've, you've been taking a lot of these classes and you have a, a set amount of data every month that you're, you know, you'll want to keep an eye on that this month to figure out how much you're using and, and how many classes you've been in. Um, because zoom, zoom does kind of eat up your, your data. Okay. So both, both, both my end and your end, um, they yeah, you, up lots of data. Mm. Yep, you you've cut it by half by turning off your video, probably. Oh. Uh, um, but uh, but the the data coming in is uh, is the bigger issue. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Mm. Was that all of them, Jeremy? That sounded about three. I think you said you had three. Did we get yep. everything covered? Yep. Okay. Anybody else? I got a question, if, if um, but nobody else does on YouTube. Um, you know, like you look for certain stuff and then they keep coming back over and over and over and over. And there's some things I looked at once or twice and they keep coming back and I don't want them. Is there a way of just somehow setting up YouTube so that I just look at stuff I want to look at? Yeah, Colin, can you screen share, pull up YouTube and uh, well, and if you if screen sharing is not a good spot for you, but show them how to delete search history, delete uh, recently viewed. I don't know. I don't do it much on the computer as much as I do it on my phone. Yeah, so um, the. Uh, let's see. So there's a couple of ways you can go about it. You can do it from the Google side. Um, otherwise, you can do it from within YouTube. Um, let me see if I can. Uh... Well, basically, it's you got to clear out like your cookies of because it uses any data. It's the big Google machine. So it's going to use any data that it has the ability to track on whatever you've looked at. It's like, oh, I'm going to show you more stuff that you've looked at. So. If you can go through, I think there's like three levels of clearing your search history, clearing your watch history, 
and then there's like one more in there. But um, you, if you go through and wipe all those out, usually you get a pretty good uh, restart of just what you subscribe to or just what you want to watch. But clearing out your subscriptions is a good way to do it too. Is that in YouTube or in Google? Uh, that's what Colin and I are kind of discussing. It's, it's a little bit of both. Yeah, so there's, um, I don't know, can you see right now? Yep. Okay. So this is the, the support page. I can send this to you in the chat, uh, Tom. Um, okay. the, the link to this. But basically, there's a couple of different places where you can edit your search history for, um, and then you can also like make changes to like what specific topics you'd like to see recommendations for. Um, so there's ways to, if you know if you'd like to add things or take things away. Um, you can do that. Otherwise, there's there's these three dots next to some of the videos, and you can select the three dots and click uh, not interested. So if I wanted to stop seeing things from the majority report or wanted to stop seeing things from SoCo here, if I click these three dots, I can just hit not interested, and it'll show me less of that. Yeah. But I'll send you. Not sure what, but not get rid of it, period. <laughs> Well, I think it's 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 hard to, because YouTube again it's it's where you might want to look at using something like Vimeo instead of YouTube because YouTube's controlled by Google, so they're using all that data collection that we talked about in the last presentation mm -hmm. when we did the search engines and web browsers. They're using every little bit of traceable cookie information to try to predict what they what they think you want to watch. Yeah. So by deleting that history is really the only way to kind of get a clean start or well there there is another way too okay. which is that you could open an incognito window which right. is if you're in google chrome you go to these three dots here and hit new incognito window now it's opening up uh without any of your browser data in there um and it's gonna be when you visit it it's like you're visiting youtube for the first time they don't know anything about you um so they will they'll just give you the the things they'll give to an average person in your area uh, for recommendations and then when you close this wind incognito window it doesn't stay in your history it doesn't keep any of the cookies um and it doesn't sync anything to your google account so it's it's like a disappearing ink basically okay now, Colin, would that, would that be the same if they use like DuckDuckGo or one of the other browsers that we talked about that doesn't track your history? Yeah, I mean, it depends if you're signed into if you're signed into YouTube, then it doesn't right. matter if you're using DuckDuckGo. Okay. Did that help you? I think so. I'll give that a try. Okay. Um, it looks like Jeremy might have another question. No, no, I don't. Mm. Oh, okay. <laughs> Just the hand still up. <laughs> <laughs> Any other questions? My grandson has his own YouTube channel. How would I be able to find it? Well, what's your grandson's name? Christoph Dundas. Okay. Well, we could check and see uh Christoph. K, but... Oh. Yes, it's with a C. Oh, I lied. Sorry, Colin. <laughs> Dundas? It's, yeah. it's C H R I S T O. Oh, right. E H. Well, he might not be using his actual name. So oh. you want to uh you wanna find out um does he does he have Facebook or anything like that? Yes. Okay. So send him a message and say, uh, send me a link to one of your videos. Okay. And then once he sends you the link, um, you're going to get, you're going to go to your video. This is not his obviously. Um, but uh, once you're on the video, there should be a subscribe button right here. Um, oh. Down at the bottom, the big red subscribe button. Okay. So once you're on his, then you can subscribe to his channel and it'll send you a notification when he posts a new video. Okay, so you can subscribe to something you don't have to pay, is that right? Right. Right, it's just, it's they use subscribe to basically just mean like, I'm oh. following this, I'm okay. keeping an eye on it. Yeah. 
Okay. Any other questions? But that's a good question, Marilyn, and you bring up a good point about there is a premium YouTube service and that subscription is just so that you don't get commercials or ads when you're watching YouTube, but mm -hmm. you don't have to have a premium service to just subscribe to a user and watch their videos. Okay. Well, I wonder if people have had as much fun as they can. <laughs> yeah, there's a limit. Well, it's a little overwhelming as it can be with anything on the internet. It's, it's, I didn't realize how open-ended that topic can be as far as how far you can hit. Like I said, there's, there's plenty of those single slides that we've done an hour and a half class on just that one slide. So um, this was another tough one to kind of figure out where the stopping and starting point of what are all the ways that you, all the things that you could do on a computer that are fun? All right. I think that pretty well wraps it up. All right. Looks like Colin's sitting down for the night. He's got his tent out. <laughs> <laughs> That's why his internet's not working so good. That's where he's sleeping tonight. <laughs> all right, I'm out on the out on the lawn. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you. And as, uh, as the guys said, we are looking next month to go to uh, in person again. It will be a, a limited number, but I think we can have, if we have Colin, Trevor, and myself, I think there's at least 10 people that we can have. And that usually covers the class size. And if need be, I will just jump out real quickly and it'll, we'll be able to keep one more in there. So that'll be something on the fifth floor. It's what we call the founder's room up there. So uh, be watching for that in the newsletter. We are working on the main newsletter right now. So uh, should be coming along by the first of the month. Awesome. And unless we have some kind of uh, fallback on the COVID stuff, that's what we're planning to do is, is have all of our programs, except those that the presenters are uncomfortable with in person. Will we still be streaming too, Mike, or will it be one or the other? It, it'll be one or the other, okay. uh, just because to operate both systems for one person, me, would be kind yep. of tough. But we do look to record them and make them available. And, and once again, you'll have to be a member, as we, as the case was before. You'll have to be a member to be able to get in for, for programs, uh, five bucks for non-members. Okay. But that's what we're looking at. So we will continue to fine tune things and uh, you'll see it in the newsletter when that comes out. Sounds great, everybody stay warm. Yeah, thank you. I really appreciate this tonight.